And the first talk is uh, key alternating ciphers in a probable setting, encryption using a small number of public permutations. And the authors are Andrei Bogdanov, Lars Knudsen, Gregor Leander, François Xavier Standard, John Steinberger, and Elmond Tischhauser. And there's going to be uh, Gregor giving the talk. So, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, joint work with Andrei uh, Bogdanov, Lars Knudsen, uh, FX Standard, John Steinberger, and Elmar Tischhauser. Um, so this is the outline of my talk. I'm going to first um, motivate the, the topic. Then I'm going to state the result, give an outline of uh, part of the proof, uh, interpret the result a bit, and uh, mention some further results that are in the paper, but not, I'm go not going to talk about this, um, and mention some future uh, topics uh, that, that seem interesting. So uh, the topic is uh, this cipher, yeah? which is uh, phrased the key alternating cipher. Um, so what happens here is that you have a message, M, and then you XOR it with the first round key. So K0 up to KT are round keys. And you XOR it with the first round key, you apply a first round function, you XOR it with the second round key, apply a next round function, and so on, until finally you get your cipher text. <coughs> And this is not something we designed, but this is something that's uh, a very uh, common way to design uh, block ciphers. And the most prominent example is certainly AES. So AES is of this form, uh, but many others exist. No? And then the kind of natural question you can ask is, is this a good way of the building block ciphers? And then maybe the, the also the natural answer is, uh, of course, because nobody can break AES. And so this is a valid way of designing block ciphers. But if you phrase the question <coughs> like this, um, so what I mean with this is, is there a generic way, way to break all these ciphers? Yeah? And uh, phrased like this, <coughs> again, it seems unlikely because nobody can break AES. But uh, strictly speaking, we don't know. So nobody uh, approached this, uh, this question so far, which uh, except for one round. Yeah? So one round of this uh, key alternating cipher has been studied in 91 by Ivan Mansour. It's known as the Ivan Mansour construction. Um, so this, uh, this uh, answer that we don't know, the answer to this, I think this is very surprising if you compare it to, to uh, the state of the art and provable uh, security, especially generic group model where similar questions are asked, uh, answered for uh, different uh, setups, of course. And also, if you compare to what happens in the SHA-3 competition for finding the new hash function, this is um, interesting, I think, because people often say that we are more familiar with, uh, we are more confident with building block ciphers than hash functions. Yeah, and the example is DES is still OK, MD4, MD5, not, not uh, really. But uh, if it comes to provable security, this is different. Yeah? <coughs> so all these SHA-3 finalists come with a proof in, in an idealized model. But no AES finalist had one. Yeah? So this uh, is a discrepancy. So I hope this motivated why this uh, is interesting to look at. So the result is then the following. <coughs> so first, I'm going to explain the setting. Um, so we are going to model the, the round functions as ideal uh, permutations that the adversary has to query to evaluate. Yeah? And then we are going to count how often an adversary has to query um, these, uh, these round functions and the cipher itself uh, to have a good uh, probability of success. So we are going to have two worlds, world one, where the adversary has uh, access to, to the round function and also their inverses, and he can ask, uh, uh, query, uh, he can ask queries to evaluate those, uh, those round functions and also the encryption oracle. So he has an encryption and decryption oracle. <coughs> and in the second world, what happens is that we replace the decipher by another random permutation. Yeah? And then the adversary has to tell apart uh, which world he is in. Yeah? That's the setup. And uh, the result that, that we are able to prove is that uh, if there's only one round, so only one P1, uh, then you need, an adversary needs uh, roughly 2 to the n over 2 queries to tell a way uh, to, to be able to uh, tell apart the two worlds. If there's uh, more than one round, then he needs 2 to the 2n over 3 uh, queries to, to have a good success probability. 
And the reason result, which is not in the proceedings version, but it's going to be in an upcoming full version, is that if you have more than two rounds, then it's two to the three and over four. And it kind of already gives a pattern what you could hope in general, yeah? how this should uh, increase with the number of rounds. But so far, we don't have a bound that increases with the number of rounds. <coughs> OK, a proof outline to uh, say something about uh, what, we, what we have been doing. So the initial game is, um, <coughs> is easy. Huh? So we, we sample the, the uh, permutations P1 up to Pt uh, at random. We select random round keys. And then we construct this, uh, uh, this uh, encryption and decryption oracle. And then the adversary has to tell, uh, tell apart which world he's in. Um, the next thing is modifying this by lazy sampling. Yeah? So in start, instead of sampling all the permutations and the keys at the beginning, we start with empty lists. Yeah? So we start with empty lists for all these surround functions and also for, for the uh, encryption decryption oracle. And then if, if uh, we receive a query from the adversary to a round function or to, to this encryption decryption oracle, <coughs> we select all uh, round functions um, at random uh, among all permutations, which are consistent with the queries made so far. And then we construct the, the decryption and encryption oracle, again, consistent with the queries made so far, and then we answer the query. We update the list, and OK. And this clearly gives the same distribution. So this is only a syntactic, syntactical change. Yeah, so it does not change the distribution of the two games. So now I'm going to, uh, <coughs> to, um, to tell you the, the, the hybrid. Yeah? So a, a, a li slightly modified game that we use uh, to be able to bound the success probabilities. Yeah? So we change the game a bit. And this a bit is actually uh, the most uh, technical and involved part. And I'm not going to explain this uh, in detail. So what we do, again, it's lazy sampling. But this time, if you receive a query to PI or E, what we do is we kind of focus only locally. Yeah? So we, 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 if we receive a query, we select a random answer Y. And the only thing we check is that PI should be a permutation. Yeah? And then in the next step, we are going to check for consistency. And I'm going to say what consistency means in, in a second. And if it's consistent, whatever this means, we output the Y and update the list. And if it's not consistent, then we crash. Yeah? We give up. And clearly, this is something the adversary will be able to tell. So what is this consistency? Consistency simply says that uh, <coughs> this, this, uh, the encryption oracle, decryption oracle, fits to the picture of the key alternating cipher. That's what it says. Yeah? Um, so it fulfills this equation. And uh, in a picture, the hybrid works like this. So for simplicity, I took n equals 2. So I have only 4. n is the, the block size. So I have only four possible inputs <coughs> and zero keys. And so what, I, what is shown here is this is the uh, encryption, uh, the cipher. And these are the two round functions. And um, so because the, the cipher is just a composition of, of P1 and P2, these things should be the same. Yeah? So now if I start with a list of queries, the adversary first asks for P1 of 0. I'm going to uh, pick a random answer. I'm going to answer this with 1. So this is uh, updated the list. Nothing uh, happened so far. I'm going, now the adversary asks for p uh, 2 of 2. And I'm going to, again, pick a random answer, say this uh, is mapped to 0. And uh, then he asks, for, OK, what is the encryption of 0? And again, I pick a random answer. So far, no problem. But now the adversary asks for p 2 of 1. I pick a random answer. I pick 3. And now this crashes. Yeah? So this is. Uh, where this crashes because it's not consistent anymore. Yeah? Because this line is, uh, ends up at, at uh, 3, while this line ends up at 2. So these are not the same functions anymore. Yeah? And this is uh, where consistency fails. Yeah? So these mappings are not the same anymore, clearly. <coughs> OK. Um, so now we have two things to do. We have to show that um, you cannot win, win in this modified game without making too many queries. And we, show, we have to show that the modified game is only slightly different to what we started with. And uh, so the first step is uh, rather easy. And I'm going to give you a sketch of the proof in the next slides, while the second part is not so easy. So this is quite involved. 
and it's technical and uh, it's uh, in the paper. And this is also the part which uh, has to be improved if you want to get better bounds. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to say only a few things about this step two. Yeah? So why is it, in, I'm not going to explain how different this, uh, this modified game is, but I'm go just going to, to show you that it's actually different. Yeah? Because um, this might not be uh, uh, so obvious. <coughs> so again, a small example with uh, zero keys and now only three possible inputs. So uh, what happens if I, I assume this, these uh, queries have been made so far, and so far there's no problem with consistency and uh, nothing. Yeah? But now if uh, the adversary makes a query um, to zero, so he wants to know what is uh, the encryption of zero. So then in the modified game, um, it's easy to see that none of these uh, answers would uh, destroy consistency. Um, so there's no problem with consistency, but what is the probability of an answer? Because there's no problem with consistency, I'm going to put a random, uh, I'm going to select a random answer between all uh, answers that uh, keep E a permutation, and because I don't have any previous query to E, I'm going to answer all, uh, I'm going to get uh, <coughs> all answers with the same probability, one over three. Yeah. Now in the, in the original game, what would happen is that I'm not going to look at E, but I'm going to pick P1, P2, and P3 randomly among all permutations that fit to the queries I already made. And now how many possibilities do I have for this? For P1, I have two possibilities. Yeah? So I have two possible permutations that uh, are consistent with this uh, query that I already made. And the same for P2 and P3. So this gives me eight possibilities in total. Yeah? So in the original game, at this step, I have eight possibilities <coughs> for choosing P1, P2, P3. But now eight is not divisible by three, and so clearly these uh, distributions are different. Okay, back to step one. Step one was the question about what is the success probability of winning in this modified game? So the first observation is that uh, <coughs> as long as the oracle does not crash, yeah, as long as it's consistent, uh, both worlds are actually the same. Because what happens in both worlds is that I just uh, pick a random answer, making sure that uh, uh, all the round functions and, and, and the encryption oracle is a permutation. And this is also what I do in world two. Yeah? So there is no difference as long as it does not crash. So it also means that uh, we have to study exactly this. Yeah? What is the probability that, that the, the modified game crashes? So again, um, drawing some lines. What is the probability for a crash? Okay, so now I modified the, the picture a bit, yeah? Because I thought it's clearer. Um, so I put this, the, the, the inverse of the encryption oracle there, so the, the decryption oracle. And those, this means this thing has to be the identity. Yeah? So, uh, sorry. so if I uh, put the same queries that I had before that uh, yielded a crash, so I start with th those queries, and then uh, this was the query that uh, resulted in a crash. Yeah, because I here started zero, and clearly with this being different, I cannot end up in zero anymore. So this is uh, inconsistent. So what, is, uh, what causes this crash? A crash can be seen as a sequence of queries which are connected in all but one positions. Yeah? So this uh, sequence of queries is connected here. Obviously, it's also connected here, and it's not connected here. Yeah? So connected in all but one position. This is what, uh, exactly what, is a, uh, what, what, uh, what makes the, the, the modified game crash. So, um, <coughs> and now it's not too hard to uh, bound this probability. So what is the number of sequences? I make uh, Q queries at most to each of the T plus one oracles I have. So this gives me at most uh, Q uh, to the power of T plus one uh, possible sequences. The probability for uh, for a uh, sequence to be connected in all but one positions is t plus one for the choice of the position where it's not connected times uh, two to the minus t over n, yeah? Because for each <coughs> position where it's connected, the probability to be connected is two to the minus n. And I have t positions, and then you're just multiplying them to get an upper bound on the probability for a crash. And this actually <coughs> caps q up uh, at around two to the t divided by t plus one n, where t is the number of rounds. Yeah? 
And then just to, to have you shown this, in the, in the paper it looks different. Yeah? So we, here, I'm not going to in, into details, but uh, so we have these two parts, and they co exactly correspond to these two uh, steps. Yeah? And this is the step, uh, step one, which I just explained, which uh, is the nice, the nice part. OK, so very briefly, what, what does this result mean? So if you want to break this cipher with idealized permutations, um, then you cannot. Yeah? Or you have to make a lot of queries. Yeah? So what does it mean for a concrete cipher? So it means if you want to break a cipher, you can interpret it like this. It's a generic attack, which is also the question I kind of started with. <coughs> if you want to break the cipher, you have to make uh, use of a special property of the permutation. But special property could be anything. Yeah? Um, and for a concrete instance, what does this result imply on the security of AES? It doesn't imply uh, anything. No? Okay. So the last part, uh, further results and, and future work. So in the paper, what we have on top of what I explained here is that we also study the expected, the expected resistance for such a construction uh, against linear cryptanalysis. Yeah? So we compute the distribution of biases where you, for, for linear approximations where you run over all possible keys. And we have a concrete uh, proposal using AES. And uh, how is this motivated? So this is motivated <coughs> by the following idea. Yeah? So the slide says a concrete proposal or how it started. So the proposal is that uh, you, you um, one of the variants of the proposal is that you, for P1 and P2, you take um, AES with a fixed key. And on top of, and this does not, uh, is not reflected in, in, in the general statement, but you take the same key. Yeah? So you take the same round key uh, everywhere. And then in, the intuition is that this is a good, could be a good block cipher against related key attacks. Yeah? This is the intuition. And this is how, how the whole thing started. Yeah? So we were looking for ways to build block ciphers um, that, are, that have a good chance to give uh, some resistance against related key attacks. And then we started investigating this uh, construction. And then we thought, OK, this is uh, so simple, we should be able to prove something. And then we checked is there what is known uh, for, uh, in the non-related key setting. And it turns out, well, this has to be settled first. Yeah. So this is uh, something we also have in the paper, and outlining this uh, ways. Uh, for future work. Um, yeah, other future work, so obviously it would be nice to improve the bound. And then also it would be nice to get uh, closer to actual constructions. Yeah? So if you look at AS, <coughs> then these round functions are not all different. Yeah? It's always the same, same round function that's applied. Yeah? It's an iterated uh, cipher, yeah? which makes very much sense for implementation reasons. Yeah? So it would be nice to uh, not assume that all these uh, round functions are different, but the same. And um, it's a similar question. Could, could you prove a similar, re similar result when all the keys are actually the same? And then, as a last point, I'd like to mention that um, from a provable uh, perspective, yeah, in this setting, this uh, key alternating cipher does not seem uh, very nice. Yeah? It seems very difficult to, to get good bounds. And one could also try to come up with new ways to design block ciphers where having this provable uh, aspect in, in, in mind and see if you can find something nice out there. So uh, a bit more on uh, how to improve the bound. <coughs> we conjecture that the lower bound is actually the one that I derived in, in this step one. And as I said, we already have improved this to uh, 2 to the 3 over 4n for more than three rounds, more than two rounds. And the first challenging step would be to get a bound that improves with the number of rounds. And that's all I have to say. Thanks. Uh, so we do have time for uh, uh, one or two questions. Yes. Uh, what happens if you are interested in finding the actual key? Do you consider the difficulty uh, as you increase the number of keys? So, um, 
we have, I mean, you, with, this, uh, with this bound, you can find the key. That's, that's all we, we know. Yeah. Otherwise, we did not consider this. No, no, the bound is not tight. Yeah. I mean, this is something you could uh, maybe also hope. Yeah? Either you improve the bound, or by looking at this uh, involved proof, there might be some kind of new ways of attacking these things. Yeah? Any other question? Um, let me actually ask something. So, uh, so this uh, <laughs> construction that uh, when you instantiate your construction using uh, AES, yes. uh, are you able to say anything concrete about its security properties? About, the, for example, like how would the, uh, your construction instantiated uh, over AES would behave against uh, some attacks like linear cryptanalysis or? No. You, you cannot say anything concrete about that? No. Okay. No, no, you have to look at AES, yeah? Okay. Yes. Now, I mean, conditional, let's say, on some property of AES, could you say something about? No, no. As I said, this, for mm -hmm. AES, this basically doesn't mean anything. Okay. All right. Any other question? Okay, so let's thank uh, uh, Gregor again. <laughs>